So what is going on YouTube, my name is Mehul and welcome to another video in which let's just go ahead and move this bad boy ball on the screen a little bit, right? And obviously making sense. So I'm going to start off by creating an object right here. So it would be const value is animated dot value. And let's say this should be actually new animated dot value. And I'm going to give it zero. Now the deal is with react what happens is that when this component re-renders if i have written a line like this this value would be reinstantiated with a new animated dot value right and that's not what we want because then in that case i lose my older value for example if the ball is moving and the user presses a button which leads to a you know re-render of this particular component i lose this value in the subsequent renders sure the animation might continue but what if i want to you know read this value later on for whatever reasons i don't know so what i really want is that i want to keep this value unchanging right so one way to do that is to use useRef, right you know from react tutorials that useRef basically returns your same object all the time whose current value is uh some mutable thing you can pass in right and useRef won't even uh, bother changing this for you or, if, you know, firing any event if this changes. One way is that. Another way is you can just go ahead and use state directly, right? Now, use state actually returns you an array of two elements, getter and setter. And since we do not really want to set the animation value using the React ways, remember, we're going to set this value, but not using the React ways because of the reasons discussed in the last video that it is not performance wise um, cheap to update uh, the animated value using react renderer so i'm going to get in get the only the zeroth value that is only the getter right so we are not really getting the setter and why did i do that because now whenever i re-render my component i'm always going to get this value as the as the value which was when the first render of this component happened right so value in a nutshell is never going to change i hope that makes sense right so once we do that now i'm pretty sure that this use state is going to return me this particular value again and again basically the first value which is never going to change and since i do not have a setter for that that's exactly what i want now what i want to do is i want to animate this ball a little so first of all, let me just go ahead and, um, you know, just give this as a style, maybe, you know, flex one, justify content center and align items, align items center so that the ball is in the center of the screen, hopefully. There we are. So we have our ball in the center of the screen now. Right, so what we want is, um, actually, let's just go ahead and remove this. We don't really need the button now. So what I want is when I tap on this ball, it should move some distance. So how I'm gonna do that is, I'm gonna say, first of all, um, that, uh, or rather, let's just go ahead and create a touchable opacity because why the hell not? Move ball and move me something like that and obviously it should go inside a text so what we need to do now is when i click on this it should move a little now how it is going to happen is that this view this view which renders the ball should be updated on the native os right so how do we do that well one way the reactive way i should rather say is you could probably have something like left and then a state variable for example like left value and you know you can use left value here and uh, you know whenever whenever you move ball you just say set set interval and then you know you set left value to left value and plus plus left value something like that you see this would kind of work but it is so bad that you should never do this why because obviously you are doing all the computations every single time in the javascript thread 
it is going to make those computations it's going to dispatch that thing on the javascript bridge to the native os it's going the native os that is then going to move the thing and uh, yeah it, it's performance wise very very poor because by the time native os updates it a new frame would be ready and probably you're going to skip some of the frames or uh, the performance would be bad so what we want is we want react to somehow react native to somehow manage this and how would it manage this is that it provides you a component called animated dot view right so animated dot view is pretty much just like how view works the regular view but with a small change animated dot view what it would do is that it would actually be able to consume these animated dot values right so i'm gonna just say or let me just keep it left value only so animated dot view can actually consume these value uh, animated dot values right so it can consume this particular object by itself and it can actually observe how it is changing and the way it changes animated dot view is going to automatically update that on the screen we do not really need to worry about the timers and the intervals and you know request animation frame all that stuff all that stuff is handled by react native so what i want to do is how how it would do that is that first things it needs its own styles some of the styles and later on trust me we're going to get into that as well how these styles work but for now just stick with me and just just let's just say left value dot get layout dot uh, or rather not get layout is available for the animated value x y for this i believe we can just manually do something like we can just do a margin left instead of left because i think and actually we do not really need to pass in the value because margin left actually accepts animated value as a regular value so once we have that in place what i want to do is i want to go ahead and say that the variable this left value this animated value what should happen to us is that it should have a timing animation right timing is one kind of animation I want this left value to move to a value let's say 100 and what I want is the duration to be a second that is a thousand milliseconds and finally I do not want to use the native driver at the moment so we're gonna get into what this is so once we have that in place and yep one more thing you need to start it by calling start like this explicitly so once you have this in place if I click on move me you're gonna see it nicely moves towards the right if I, you know, just increase this value a little and reload this thing and move it, you can see it goes out of the screen, right? So this is how it works. So what essentially is happening again, again, we're going to get to animate the timing. So don't worry about that. But more or less what's happening is we created a view which is able to consume an animated value, right? when it is able to consume this value it's, it can actually see when this value is changing and then you know coordinate with the operating system to see what we can do about this on the screen and when i click on this i explicitly start changing this value animated values never change unless you start some sort of animation on them right so it's going to stay zero all, almost always if you do not really start some sort of animation on this so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, don't really forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next one.